Hello and welcome to Dhruva's Web. In this video, we are going to discuss the strategies for the management of plant virus diseases. What is a virus and why is it important to control it? A virus is an infective agent that typically consists of a nucleic acid molecule in a protein coat. It's too small to be seen by light microscopy and can multiply only within the living cells of a host. It is very important to control plant viruses as many plant pathogens like bacteria, fungi, etc. can be controlled by the application of chemicals which interfere in some way with the metabolism of the invading pathogen and so prevent or ameliorate disease. But in the case of viruses, these methods can be used so extensively to control viruses. Having few, if any, enzymes of their own, viruses depend either on enzymes already in the host cells or on those that are induced as a result of infection. These enzymes are responsible for nucleic acid and protein synthesis and chemical interruption of their activity disrupts similar enzymes essential for the normal functioning of cells. Prerequisites Correct pathogen ID Understanding pathogen biology or disease epidemiology Development and evaluation of a management strategy Approaches of viral diseases management Conventional approaches and biotechnological approaches Conventional approaches the conventional approaches for the management of plant viral diseases include indexing and certification programs, viral free seed used for the management of lettuce mosaic virus, heat therapy, meristem culture used for the management of tobacco ring spot virus, somatic embryogenesis, oil sprays which are used for the management of maize dwarf mosaic virus, cross protection, which is used for the management of tobacco mosaic virus, barrier crops used for the management of watermelon mosaic virus, reflective mulches used for the management of squash mosaic virus, and natural resistance. Indexing and certification programs Removal of infected crop residues or remnants of virus-infected plants as they act as a source of infection Prevention of direct contact of healthy plants with infected plants or with contaminated hands. Removal of perennial weeds as they act as sources of viral diseases in legumes and cucurbits. Use of virus-free certified propagation materials and seeds to prevent seed-borne diseases. Cultural methods. Covering of susceptible seed buds with tall barrier crops to prevent the spread of vectors. Closely spaced plants tend to escape infection. Growing of susceptible plants in isolation. Alteration of dates or sowing or changed planting dates. Growing of plants in sterilized soil which helps to prevent soil-borne infections. Leaving fields fallow and crop rotation. Heat therapy or thermotherapy. Heat therapy was first utilized by Kunkel. In 1936 and the first report of virus elimination was by B. Kasanis who used heat therapy to eliminate leaf roll virus from potato in 1915. Use of hot water heat therapy or thermotherapy eliminated 100% of grapevine fan leaf virus in grapevine, freed potato tubers of potato leaf roll virus or PLRV, tomato black ring virus or TBRV and sugarcane streak mosaic virus or SCSMV. Heat therapy for grapevine is 45 degrees Celsius for 120 to 180 minutes. For sugarcane sets, it is 50 degrees Celsius for 120 minutes and for potato tubers, it is 50 degrees Celsius for 17 minutes. Meristem tip culture Meristem tip culture is one of the most widely used methods for virus elimination from infected plants and production of virus-free plants. Apical meristem culture is a proven means of clonal propagation and for eliminating virus from infected plants. Somatic embryogenesis Somatic embryogenesis is the development of plants from somatic embryos without the fusion of gametes. 
It can be induced by various factors such as hormones, sucrose and ethylene under in vitro conditions. Somatic embryogenesis through cyclic somatic embryogenesis is one of the best methods for large scale micropropagation of plants and used for virus elimination from the infected plant materials. Cross protection Viral cross protection in plants is known as an acquired immunity phenomenon where a mild virus strain or isolate can protect plants against economic damage caused by a severe challenge strain or isolate of the same virus. Elimination and control of insect vectors. Avoidance of vectors. Avoid plantation of susceptible varieties. Avoid plantation of crops in disease prone areas. Removal of alternate host weeds, barrier crops, reflective mulches, direct control of vectors, bioagents, use of predators, sprays with water oil emulsion, use of recommended insecticides. Barrier crops. Barrier plants or crops are a management tool based on secondary plants used within or bordering a primary crop for the purpose of disease control. Aphid transmitted viruses account for approximately 50% of the 600 known viruses with an invertebrate vector. Barrier plants may act as a real natural sinks for non-persistent aphid transmitted viruses and have proved in the past to be an effective crop management strategy to protect against virus infection. Reflective mulches a reflective mulch delays or prevents certain flying insects from infesting plants because reflected ultraviolet light confuses insects' ability to locate their hosts. Reflective mulches have been effectively used to greatly reduce colonization of young crops by winged aphids, leafhoppers, thrips, and white flies. Bioagents for control of vectors. Here you can see the bioagents used for the control of vectors. Predators for control of vectors. Predators influence the behavior of prey and by doing so, they potentially reduce pathogen transmission by a vector. Arthropod predators have been shown to reduce the consumption of plant biomass by pest herbivores. Breeding of resistant and tolerant cultivars. Availability of sources of resistance, nature of resistance gene, their inheritance patterns, method of breeding, number of resistant varieties developed in different plant species. Resistance mechanisms. The gene for gene hypothesis states that for each gene controlling resistance in the host, there is a corresponding specific gene controlling avirulence in the pathogen. Depending on the gene combinations in a myelurase, different genes will be genetically identified as the avirulence or AVR gene. Natural resistance. There are many natural antiviral resistance phenomena which have been known and studied for decades which include resistance to infection, resistance to virus translocation through the plant, recovery from infection and genetically defined resistance. Here, you can see a table listing all the R genes with the plants which are resistant to them and the viruses which transmit them. The Arabidopsis plant is resistant to the RCY gene transmitted by cucumber mosaic virus. It is also resistant to RTM1 and RTM2 genes which are transmitted by the turnip crinkle virus or TCV and tobacco H virus TEV respectively. The potato plant is resistant to the Rx1 and Rx2 genes, both transmitted by potato virus X or PVX. Arabidopsis is also resistant to the HRT gene caused by turnip crinkle virus. The tomato plant is resistant to the SW5 gene transmitted by tomato spotted wilt virus or TSWV. And the tobacco plant is resistant to the N gene of tobacco mosaic virus or TMV. Modern methods. Transgenics. Their development require knowledge of viruses, their infection cycle, 
strategies of transgenic development. Life cycle of plant viruses for the virus to reproduce and thereby establish infection it must enter cells of the host organism and use those cells materials to enter the cells proteins on the surface of the virus interact with proteins of the cell attachment or absorption occurs between the viral particle and the host cell membrane a hole forms in the cell membrane then the virus particle or its genetic contents are released into the host cell where viral reproduction may commence Next, a virus must take control of the host cell's replication mechanism. At this stage, a distinction between susceptibility and permissibility of a host cell is made. Permissibility determines the outcome of the infection. After control, it is established and the environment is set for the virus to begin making copies of itself. Replication occurs quickly by the millions. After a virus had made many copies of itself, it usually has exhausted the cell of its resources. The host cell is now no longer useful to the virus. Therefore, the cell often dies and the newly produced viruses must find a new host. The process by which virus progeny are released to find new host is called shedding. This is the final stage in the viral life cycle. Some viruses can hide within a cell either to evade the host cell defenses or immune system or simply because it is not in the best interest of the virus to continually replicate. This hiding is deemed latency. During this time, the virus does not produce any progeny. It remains inactive until external stimuli such as light or stress prompts it to activate. Viruses can spread by direct transfer of sap and by contact of wounded plant with a healthy one. Such contact may occur during agricultural practices when damage is caused by tools or hands or naturally when an animal feeds on the plant. Generally, tobacco mosaic virus or TMV, potato viruses and cucumber mosaic viruses are transmitted via sap. Strategies for transgenic development Transgenic virus resistant plants were first produced in 1986 by genetically engineering tobacco plants to express the coat protein of tobacco mosaic virus. The introduction of coat protein transgenes has since proved to be an extremely effective and generally applicable approach to engineering virus resistant in crop plants. Extensive field trials with transgenic virus resistant tobacco Tomato, potato, and cucumber lines have confirmed not only the durability of the resistance under natural conditions, but the ease with which virus-resistant lines retaining the original cultivar traits can be recovered. Engineered resistance, pathogen-derived resistance, protein-based protection, and nucleic acid, DNA or RNA-based protection. Pathogen-derived resistance it is a way in which plants can be protected from diseases with transgenes that are derived from the pathogen themselves. It is of two types, protein-based protection and nucleic acid-based protection. Here you can see homology-based resistance, which is an example of protein-based resistance, and antisense RNA, which is an example of nucleic acid-based resistance. Code protein-based protection Coat protein-based protection or coat protein-mediated protection is used to refer to the resistance caused by the expression of a virus coat protein or CP gene in transgenic plants. Examples of coat protein-based protection Using coat protein-based protection, tobacco plant got resistance to tobacco mosaic virus, cucumber mosaic virus, and tobacco rattle virus. Potato got resistance to potato virus X and potato virus Y. Tomato got resistance to tomato leaf curl virus and alfalfa mosaic virus. Soybean got resistance to bean mosaic virus. Rice got resistance to rice strip virus. Citrus got resistance to citrus tristeza virus. Maize got resistance to maize dwarf mosaic virus. 
Melon got resistance to cucumber mosaic virus and lettuce got resistance to lettuce mosaic virus. Replicase mediated resistance. Replicase mediated resistance or RMR is a form of pathogen derived resistance in which either the polymerase gene or another viral gene associated with virus infection is expressed in the transgenic plant and elicits the resistance to that virus and closely related strains or variants of that virus. Examples of replicate mediated resistance. Using replicate mediated resistance, Barley got resistance to barley yellow dwarf virus. Citrus got resistance to citrus tristeza virus. Cucumber got resistance to cucumber fruit mortal mosaic virus. Both gladiolus and lily got resistance to cucumber mosaic virus. Papaya got resistance to papaya ring spot virus. Pea got resistance to pea seed borne mosaic virus. Potato got resistance to potato leaf roll virus potato virus Y and tobacco rattle virus. Rice got resistance to maize dwarf mosaic virus, rice tongue rose spherical virus and rice yellow mortal virus. Potato got resistance to alfalfa mosaic virus, cucumber mosaic virus, potato virus X and potato virus Y, tobacco mosaic virus and tobacco rattle virus. Tomato and watermelon both got resistance to cucumber mosaic virus. Watermelon also got resistance to the zucchini yellow mosaic virus and the CP gene of watermelon mosaic virus. Weed got resistance to wheat tree mosaic virus and wheat yellow mosaic virus. Movement protein mediated resistance. A movement protein is a non-structural protein which is encoded by some plant viruses to allow their movement from one infected cell to neighboring cells. Many if not all plant viruses encode a movement protein and some express more than one. Types of movement proteins. TMB30K movement protein. Double gene block movement proteins. Triple gene block movement proteins, potiviral, CL or CP. Examples of movement protein mediated resistance. Using movement protein mediated resistance, tobacco got help in controlling the spread of tobacco mosaic virus and tobacco H virus from spreading to other parts of the plant and potato got help in controlling potato leaf roll virus, potato virus X and potato virus Y. Nucleic acid based protection. Antisense RNA, satellite RNA, defective interfering nucleic acids, ribozymes, and virus induced gene silencing. Antisense RNA. Antisense RNA or ASRNA, also referred to as antisense transcript, natural antisense transcript, NAT or antisense oligonucleotide is a single-stranded RNA that is complementary to a protein-coding messenger RNA or mRNA with which it hybridizes and thereby blocks its translation into protein. Satellite RNA A satellite is a subviral agent that depends on the co-infection of a host cell with the helper virus for its replication. Ribozymes Ribozymes or ribonucleic acid enzymes are RNA molecules that can catalyze specific biochemical reactions including RNA splicing in gene expression like the action of protein enzymes. Virus-induced gene silencing Virus-induced gene silencing is a technology that exploits an RNA-mediated antiviral defense mechanism. In plants infected with unmodified viruses, the mechanism is specifically targeted against the viral genome. Other strategies Transgenic plants expressing PR proteins, plantibodies, antisense to B1 and 3 glucanases, human cysteine in C, ribosomes inactivating proteins or RIP, ribonuclease gene PAC1, insect toxin. 2,5-oligoadenylate synthetase, induction of systemic resistance with root colonizing bacteria and CRISPR-Cas9. 
Thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to get notifications for more new educational videos.